This video was brought to you by our podcast, Trust Issues. Back in 2017, the then Prime Minister, Theresa May, announced that she'd be introducing a new cap on energy bills to stop them spiralling out of control. She claimed that this system would save households around £100 each. While this might have been the plan, it's fair to say that that's not exactly working right now. In the winter of last year, the price of the cap was £1,277. In October, it was expected to go up to £3,549. This has now been capped by £2,500 by Prime Minister Liz Truss. The thing is, this is being paid for through borrowing. The government will pay energy companies somewhere in the region of £60 billion in subsidising this reduction. So, in order to bring down the astronomical costs being demanded by energy companies, some have suggested that they should be brought back under public ownership. So, let's look into some potential ways in which energy companies could be nationalised and whether it's likely to happen. To understand the theory behind nationalising energy, we need to understand which parts could be nationalised and how this could work. There are basically two ways we can nationalise energy, which we'll look at in turn before looking at Labour's new plan. Basically, the energy system of the UK is split into three different parts. First, we have various power plants, including solar panels, wind farms, oil drilling fields, gas fields, nuclear power plants, etc. These are the parts that collect or generate energy. The second part is the transmission and distribution of energy. This is highly regulated. The third part is the energy retailers. These are the companies such as Octopus Energy and EDF that people actually buy their gas and electricity from. The first way that energy could be nationalised is by taking these energy retailers into public ownership. The state could then subsidise the company and sell energy cheaper, likely at a loss. This would be propped up with taxpayer cash. This wouldn't get around the issue at the moment that there just isn't that much energy to go around and, as such, some element of rationing would need to be implemented. Currently, high costs discourage use. If the cost was to be brought down, there need to be some other mechanism to discourage use. Now, it's important to note that the energy companies are capped at being allowed profits of more than 1.9%, whereas the national grid, the second element of the energy system that we discussed earlier, saw its pre-tax profits rise by 107% to £3.4 billion. So, some will argue that nationalising the energy companies may not be the most effective way to regain money. Nonetheless, this seems to be something that has been favoured by former Prime Minister Gordon Brown. He suggested that the current energy cap should be cancelled and that the government should negotiate directly with energy companies to bring down the cost of energy. If they're unable to, he argued that they should be temporarily nationalised. This is, in effect, very similar to what he did with banks back in 2009, where some banks were taken under public control in order to protect customers. Anyway, this is one way in which energy could be nationalised. So let's move on and discuss another way in which we could nationalise energy – by nationalising more than just energy companies. There were a number of ways of doing this, from nationalising small parts of the UK's energy system to creating a whole new energy company that's publicly owned that has huge responsibility over the creation of new green forms of energy creation. Now, strangely enough, the Tories have actually proposed nationalising a small part of the energy system. An organisation known as the Electricity System Operator, or ESO, is currently part owned by and is part of the privately owned electricity transmission grid, known as the National Grid. The ESO's job is to move electricity around the country, getting it to where it needs to be in a real-time basis. The Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy, or BEIS, currently has a plan to take the ESO, but not the wider grid, under public ownership and to transform it into the Future Systems Operator, or FSO. It will have all the responsibilities of the ESO, but it will also be responsible for planning new technologies such as hydrogen and carbon capture, and generically planning future development, hence presumably the name change. BEIS has confirmed that this will take place by 2024 and that the national grid will be appropriately compensated when the ESO is taken under public control. As a more left-wing party, Labour have pledged to go further. Back in 2019, their manifesto claimed specifically that Labour would create a new UK national energy agency which will own and maintain the national grid infrastructure and oversee the delivery of our decarbonised targets. 
This clearly goes further than the Tories. They're not committing just to nationalising a small part of the national grid, but instead the whole thing. Now, the Labour Party has gone under quite a big change since 2019. Jeremy Corbyn is not only no longer the leader, but has also been removed from the party entirely. Keir Starmer has been in charge, and many view him as being much more of a centrist. So perhaps Labour has changed its policy and no longer want to nationalise energy. Well, Labour recently held their national conference, at which Starmer made a speech committing his party to create something called Great British Energy. The largest onshore wind farm in Wales. Who owns it? Sweden. Energy bills in Swansea are paying for schools and hospitals in Stockholm. The Chinese Communist Party has a stake in our nuclear industry. And five million people in Britain pay their bills to an energy company owned by France. So we will set up great British energy within the first year of a Labour government. And because it is right for jobs, because it is right for growth, because it is right for energy independence from tyrants like Putin, then yes, conference, great British energy will be publicly owned. Now, this is a different policy from Corbyn in 2019. It doesn't mean that Labour want to bring the grid under national ownership. Instead, it would be a brand new company, which is publicly owned, whose function would be to create new green power plants. These could be wind, solar, tidal or nuclear. It's also worth pointing out that it would be independent from the government. So, although it would be funded by the government, it would be able to make investments independently from it. The argument is that it could back emerging projects and projects that are hard to finance. So, this is Labour's new plan, and something that Starmer is hoping the British public will be in favour of, especially considering the huge cost of gas and electricity at the minute. The Tories under Liz Truss will be hoping that her plan to limit energy bills through borrowing will win the public over and stop them backing more out there solutions being proposed by Labour. YouGov recently found that 60% of the public back bringing energy companies under public ownership. This is distinctly different from both the Tories and Labour's plan, but it does at least indicate that the public could support Starmer's plans, which is much more similar to this. What do you think though? Does this plan make sense to you? Also, if you want more discussion of British political issues, then check out our podcast, Truss Issues, where we're evaluating Liz Truss's first 100 days in office and working out if she'll even make it to 100. Since we promoted it earlier in the week, the show jumped 93 places on the podcast charts to become the UK's 23rd biggest political podcast. We can do better though, so subscribe in your favourite podcast app for more political chatter, or you can watch it on the TLDR podcast YouTube channel.